Having explored the effects of a harmonic perturbation on the transitions between energy levels, we're now in a position to explore the interaction between atoms and electromagnetic radiation or light. So the situation we're going to consider is the following. So we have uh, a source of electromagnetic uh, waves or light at the origin of our coordinate system. And we're gonna look at uh, hydrogen as a model system. So we have the nucleus and at some distance over here, we have the orbiting electron. And we're interested in the effect of the uh, electromagnetic field at the position of the electron, which we'll denote by capital R. The distance from the source to the nucleus will denote by capital R naught. And the distance between the nucleus and the orbiting electron will denote by lowercase r. So I'll write this a bit bigger. This is the nucleus, this point over here. And to model this, we'll consider uh, that far, the, the idea that from, from its source, uh, an electromagnetic field propagates as a plane wave. And uh, we know from Maxwell's equations that the uh, electromagnetic field has an electric field and a magnetic field component. And we'll call that the E field and the B field components. Okay, so if we were interested in the electric field at the position of the electron, capital R, at some time T, we'll write this as two times uh, an electric field vector amplitude. And the, uh, the wave component which has a spatial and a temporal uh, variation. So this is uh, the propagation vector and it also gives you a measure of the wavelength of light and omega is the angular frequency of light. And you also have a magnetic field component which uh, we can write in a similar manner. And here this uh, electric field vector over here, this is just the, the different components in our coordinate system. So if we were to choose a Cartesian coordinate system, it would be something like this. And here I'm using X hat, Y hat and Z hat as the unit uh, vectors rather than i, j, and k to not confuse the k with the propagation vector. Okay. And again, the reason for this is because uh, an electromagnetic wave can be thought of as having an electric field component in this direction, for example. Perpendicular to that direction, you have a magnetic field component and the direction of propagation is normal to both of these. So this is direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. Here, the magnitude of K is given by two pi over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength of light. And as I mentioned before, omega is the angular frequency. Okay. 
this is our description of light. And uh, if we were to rewrite this at the position of the electron, but in terms of r naught and little r, Start it with this minus omega t. And it's the same idea for the magnetic field component. Uh, we're actually going to ignore any effects due to the magnetic field because they're usually uh, much, much smaller than the effects of the electric field. So these will consider negligibly small uh, with respect to the effects due to the electric field component of light. Okay, so we'll uh, forget about the presence of the magnetic field for now. The other thing we're going to add to the scenario we're considering Uh, so we're going to look at light in the optical range, so in the in the visible spectrum, because this is typically where uh, spectroscopy is uh, is used. So this is uh, wavelengths on the order of four thousand angstroms to eight thousand angstroms. And the point of doing this is that this makes the wavelength of light much, much smaller than the typical size of an atom, which is usually on the order of the Bohr radius, which is this A naught. And what that lets us do is we can neglect any spatial variation of the electric field over the, the size of the atom. And the reason for that is uh, the difference between the electric field at the nucleus and the electron is given by this little r component. And if we were to tailor expand this, so this is, uh, remember this is two pi over lambda in magnitude. And this is the distance between the nucleus and the electron. We can tailor expand this. And in the limit of the wavelength being much, much larger than this little r, uh, we can neglect any higher order contributions to the change in the electric field between the nucleus and the electron. In that case, our electric field will be given by the following. So we still have uh, the distance from the source of light to our atom, and that's a constant. times e to the minus i omega t, so the temporal variation of light. And this we're going to call a curly E vector. So this is the amplitude of the electric field at the position of the atom. And finally, uh, as is usual for waves, 
we're using complex exponentials as a matter of convenience because they're easier to work with than trigonometric functions. But we're ultimately only interested in the real component. So this is the form of the electric field that we're going to be working with. And we can separate the vector portion of the electric field amplitude. So this is just this magnitude, cosine omega t. And we'll call the, uh, the direction of the electric field by an n hat vector. So this is uh, a measure of the polarization of light. So it's the direction in which the electric field is oscillating. If you go back over here, uh, n hat is in this direction. And I'll loosely call that the direction of polarization. That'll be important later on when we deal with unpolarized light. From this electric field, we can define a potential energy for a particle of charge Q. This is the charge times the electric potential where the electric potential is given uh, the minus the gradient of the electric potential gives you the electric field. Okay, so the electric field is not in itself uh, the per perturbative energy term. We have to transform that into potential energy. So the form of this potential energy is Q minus R dot with the electric field. We're going to bring this, it's just a number, so we can bring it in. So it'll be minus Q R. The direction of the electric field, we're taking it to be denoted by a vector n hat. and the electric field amplitude. We're going to define uh, the quantity Q R vector as D. And this is known as the dipole moment. Technically, this is an operator because R is an operator. So we'll be using this to look at uh, Uh, expectation values and matrix elements of the dipole moment. So we can put all this together to finally write our perturbative portion of the Hamiltonian as minus our dipole moment dotted with the electric field. The uh, electric field was given by two e naught cosine omega t from the real part of our exponential. And here, if you want to compare to our previous notation for a harmonic perturbation, we had called the amplitude delta v hat. In this case, this is equal to d dot n e naught. So this is the form of the perturbation that we're going to look at. In the next video, we'll uh, see what our previous equations for the probability of 
of transition that we previously derived more generally for harmonic perturbation will look like in the specific case of electromagnetic radiation.